for listening to um, the show and tell live and you have any questions, please remember to ask them using the chat function um, and we'll be responding to them as we go along. But we have some set time aside um, at the end of the show and tell to answer questions as well. Um, as a quick refresher, Planex and BOPS have been developed um, by a partnership of councils with developers at Open Systems Lab and Unboxed um, with support and funding from DELAC. Um, and we have a lot of exciting new developments to show you today, including demos. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, in terms of the agenda for today, we'll have some updates from BOPS team. Um, a roadmap overview from Rosanna, um, consultations features, including um, showing application publicly um, by me and Celia, um, user testing and feedback from Holly, and development of the red line um, constraints changes by um, Ben E. From PlanX, Jess will show us some service improvements based on user research and analytics. Um, and Christine and Ray will um, tell us a bit about communications. Um, we'll have onboarding from Katie and Jonathan will share some reflections from Medway um, together day. Um, and I think we can start um, Rosanna if you want to take us through the roadmap. So um, yeah, so just to give everyone who isn't familiar with the roadmap an overview, um, we have some vertical columns uh, which show what's being delivered, what we're uh, getting done in the next six months, which takes us up to the end of July, the next 12 months, which is August to July, and then um, what, we, what our new things we'll be introducing as well. And then horizontally, if we look at the swim lanes, um, we have product stability and performance, uh, driving user activation, and then if you scroll down a bit, um, got drive user engagement and product integrations. Um, so as you can see, what we've delivered so far includes all the things around um, LDCs, which um, is all done. We've done a discovery on um, the register, and we also uh, did um, the consultations discovery for prior proposal for householders. And then if you scroll down, just see, we've made some content improvements. We've um, found a way to provide planning history data into box. Scroll down. Um, we've, we've looked at all the features for different planning applications. Um, we have a plan for data um, integrations and systems and a tactical solution um, history. We did a bit of research around that as a, a spike. So where we are now, if we go into the now, uh, scroll across to the now column. And if you click on the corner, Sarah, you can expand the tickets. So you can see the two little arrows uh, up at the top there. Can you see the two little arrows? It's expanded. OK, perfect. So it just gives you detail of what it is. So we're collecting ongoing metrics and we're also doing some user testing as well to, to actually get that comparison between existing systems and new ones. So that's something we're doing at the moment. If you scroll, if you go down to the next lane, Prior approvals, if you expand that. Um, our main uh, focus has been to build out a large extension, and if we had time, we would look at uh, commercial to a home and convert an agricultural building to a, into a home. But actually, we've uh, realised for MVP, we're going to just focus on the large extension to house because that's the highest volume of app applications of this type. And we're um, on track to get this completed by the end of July. And then if we go into the next one. Unfortunately, I can't expand that, Rosanna. I think okay, someone else well, might anyway, I'll just talk about it. So we're just start. We're also starting on full householder at the moment. So we're going to be doing um, a mapping session of uh, a story mapping session to actually just start to see what kind of features and things we need to build and what we need to prioritise as our um, minimum viable product. And then if you scroll down, 
Um, we're working on how we improve and co collect and respond to live service feedback because you're actually able to use uh, BOP. So we're kind of learning on that all the time and we're doing research around this. And then if you go further down. <laughs> We're also in discussions with um, planning portal, so we're starting to see how to make sure we can do that integration with BOPS. And um, also we're, we've got some ongoing um, work to document um, a sort of tactical solution of how we can start to pull in um, planning history data into BOPS so that it's available when people are assessing applications. That's where we are. Um, in the roadmap at the moment. Um, I've put the link in the um, chat anyway, and um, if people want to have a look at it and see what else is on the roadmap, they can. And just to let everybody know, we we always update and refresh this uh, roadmap because obviously we work in an agile way and we learn things as we go along. And so we will be re refreshing this next week. So we'll have a, a more up-to-date version of it shortly. And I'll pass it on to Celia and Nora. Thank you, Rosanna. Um, Sarah, do you mind sharing again uh, the slides? Thank you. Great. Um, but actually, I might have to take over from you in a second. Um, Celia, would you like to make a little introduction on on the consultation features? Yeah. Thanks. Hi, I'm Celia. I'm a developer at Unbox, working on Box. Um, sorry if it's a little bit noisy. I'm just in the office and there's not many meeting spaces, but here we go. Um, so as you probably know, BOPS actually doesn't have a place to publish planning applications at the moment too, um, which has become a bit of a blocker for us for making BOPS viable because we can't put these planning applications anywhere. Um, so for now, we've put in a stopgap solution and we've created an MVP version of a register um, while we're sort of figuring out a long-term solution. Um, so what we're doing currently is going, we're going to publish applications to BOPS applicants, which is the public facing side of BOPS. Um, it was being used for applicants to correct invalid parts of their application, like the red line boundary or invalid documents. Um, but now you can see planning applications on it as well. Um, so I think now Nora is going to demonstrate what this looks like. Um, I'll just share my screen. I hope you can see it. Um, so this is a planning application um, been validated, as you can see the, the tags on it. So I'm just going to show you um, firstly what makes it um, public or not. So we have this function here where it's very clear and simple, um, making public um, the application on and you have a button or yes or no. On this one, I'm going to update it to yes so you can see um, how it's going to look like. So. This is from consultation. This is how we send letters um, to the neighbors. So we had neighbors in that field and then they appear in this section. Um, this is how the letter is laid out. So this is what they receive by post for this type of application. And in here you're going to see there is a link um, that they can use to see their comments um, and the application information online. So I'm just going to. Um, copy this and actually have it saved. Um, and if I go in consultation and gonna send um, upload the response. So this is an, um, a way that we developed um, how responses can be uploaded um, in the system. Um, and this is an example, but I'm just gonna demonstrate to you how this would look like. So the neighbor's address is already in here because we added it in the previous section. Um, you can also add new neighbor addresses if um, during the assessment you feel like there is uh, more to to check, um, uh, more, more people to be informed by the proposal. Um, and uh, I'm just going to write in here just as a test. Um, so this is where you put in the um, information that you receive from neighbors in um, the one that will be made public and in the section below you will put a redacted one. Um, we know this is not an ideal situation and I think Holly is going to talk a bit about user testing on this, but it is um, a, a 
a way to resolve this issue at this stage um, for an MVP and um, we're looking to to change it in the future. Um, so you can see the net, the responses have been updated here. And if we go in this um, link, ooh, um, maybe that was a different link. Let me see, go back. Um, let me get the right application. Uh, ending 1969. Um, go back in here. Also, I need to make a demo. Thanks, Don, all this work. Um, uh, no, you'll need yeah. to add staging to the after bots applicants. You'll need to add the word staging, dash staging in the URL. Um, box applicant here? Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, it's dash. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Great. There you so go. Here we are. Um, so this is what neighbors would see. So they see the site location plan. They see the application documents and their responses. So the one that was previously added and the one that um, I just added now. And also um, we included a bit of information about what comments we can consider as part of um, a submission. So as you know, there are some um, planning material considerations that uh, officers can take them into account when making a decision, and we just clarified what what are those in here. So is a bit um, a bit of support for neighbors to know what what we'll take into account or not. Um, so then they're wasting on the, they don't waste their time writing about things that we can't consider. Um, and that's it in relation to um, yeah neighbors consultations and how this is shown on applications. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If there's anything you want to add, Celia? Um, I think we've had a couple of questions. I don't know if we want to answer them now oh. or later. Let me have a look. Um, maybe we can come, come on them after? Yeah, does that make sense? And stop sharing yeah, now. Absolutely. Um, cool. Uh, Holly, would you like to tell us a bit about the user testing and feedback we got? Feedback. 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 Okay. Um, sorry about that. Yes, I can. So um, just to be really clear, um, everything that you've just seen um, was built and user tested in six weeks. So an incredibly short amount of time because we are aiming to build um, an MVP. So that means the absolute minimum that we needed in order for a planning officer to complete the journey so that we could finish prior approvals to start off with. So this is just for prior approvals, larger home extension. Um, and we're when we finish this, which we're hoping to have finished um, the application type for prior approval by the end of this month, we'll be moving on to full householder. And because we're working in an agile way, what we've done is just created an absolute baseline foundation. So it means the journey can be completed, even though it is a bit bumpy. And then through user testing, we're identifying the areas that we need to focus on to make sure we put the right amount of effort into things that will add most value. Um, so we will be iterating on everything you've seen um, and quite soon um, in the next couple of months, all of this stuff will uh, be improved upon. So the couple of questions that um, have come up so far. Um, uh, yes, we are saying currently you have to copy and paste the text of a response into a text field. Um, it's a, it means that the journey can be completed, but we appreciate it is not the ideal. It just means it's we've got the baseline and we'll be revisiting this soon. Um, and um, in terms of the bulk, um, so because this was designed specifically for prior approvals, larger home extensions, um, we have focused on being able to add a small amount of neighbors. And as we move into householder, we know we need to be able to add more. So we'll be addressing that issue as well. Um, next slide, please, Nora. So um, we've asked a few planning officers um, in, uh, 
Camden and Southwark mainly so far for this one um, to run through this with us and kind of like uh, point out to us, uh, talk through what they were seeing. Um, and um, uh, as, as I'm sure quite a few of you will have picked up, um, they were not particularly keen on having to manually add addresses. So we definitely are aware that this is some, an area that we'll be picking up in our next iteration as soon as we get there. Um, and uh, another comment was it would be great if this could add what was on the application form. We know with prior approvals that um, the the applicant is often asked is asked to supply the neighbour addresses. So as soon as we're able to get that from PlanX, we'll be able to add that in uh, here as well. Um, next slide, please. Um, and the other area that um, uh, definitely had some uh, strong opinions about was the uploading uh, responses manually. Um, so sort of comments like, I don't want to add comments manually. All sorts of things could go wrong here. Um, we can absolutely see that. We, we did it in this way because we wanted to have the foundations and um, be able to complete the journey. And we will be iterating on this to make it better in the next round. Um, however, we did get some really positive comments around um, using the traffic light system to mark um, comments whether they are supportive or um, an objection to um, and so we will be continuing to work with that as well. Um, next slide please. Um, so we asked uh, the planning officers that we tested this with to give it a score out of 10. Um, so uh, we are really aware that this is um, the absolute foundations. It's the first time we've built anything in consultations. <laughs> Um, and so this, um, I feel actually, yes, we, we got some low marks, but we also got some quite nice marks as well. Um, and um, so we had some comments like, seems like I have to do more work to complete my current tasks, but also it does seem easier, cleaner, quicker to see. Um, and um, although I wouldn't say it's significantly better, I think like there was a feeling that I could see which direction it was going in. So I feel positive that we will move this in the right direction as we move forward. And then the Next slide, please, Nora. Um, the other thing we did whilst we were talking to people is to really confirm um, what it was that would um, add the most value for um, uh, officers who are doing this part of the consultation phase. So um, the purpose of consultation um, we gathered through speaking to people is to ensure that anyone who might be affected has the chance to have their say and comments taken into account. But the mindset of the officer actually doing the um, consultation is that I want it to give me the confidence there won't be any mistakes because mistakes cost a lot of time and trust from the applicant. So that's what we'll be really focusing on as we come back to iterate on these in the next uh, round. And we'll be looking at how can we support consultation by reducing manual tasks and increasing accuracy wherever we can. Um, next slide, please, Nora. Um, whilst we were there, we also tested um, some of uh, the validation process that we've been um, iterating on uh, through this prior approvals application. Um, next slide, please. So I'll just um, share with you a couple of the um, insights we heard from that. Um, we've been doing work on the dashboard, which is where you see all of your planning applications. Um, we've got lots of responses. I think something we noticed is that um, officers have sort of like different ways that they want to sort their application. So um, I'd like to filter them by not started and then sort them or I would like to be able to sort by application type or by number of days and um, I'd like to be able to order them from oldest first um, or sort by what's most urgent so we're we're currently working on different ways that we can kind of sort these applications so that they'll be um, able to be sorted in a number of different ways depending on what you're trying to do um, um, and people really liked the the different sort of colours, using colours to um, show which were more useful and which were more urgent. Um, and um, next slide, please. Um, another area that um, came up in validation was the constraints section. And um, so this hasn't been worked on really since LDC. Um, and we did get some comments on this as it, because it, it doesn't really do very much right now. So this is definitely something we'll be picking up in Householder as well. Um, again, sort of like similar comments to the consultation. I don't want to add constraints myself. There's too much room for error. Um, next slide, please. However, something we got really great feedback on was this sort of like um, application, um, not the landing page, but the validation sort of um, task checklist. Um, and we got lots of positive responses about showing the different colors and the tags, status tags changing to show 
where um where the um what had been done and what was still to be done so it was kind of like creating a a to-do list that was automatically updated um, and we got lots of really positive comments about that and um the way that that was worked through and the sort of chronology of it um yeah and people really like that it was all in one place so it's here and i don't have to check anywhere else um next slide please um, and we ask people to score validation overall as a process for prior approvals. Um, so the sort of lower end of the score is like there's promising and there's a few areas to be improved on um, and something around like it's definitely on the right track, but there's still a lot of manual stuff that worries me. Um, but we did also get some really positive comments um, and really great scores um, reaching near the top of like of 10, which feels really great that we're definitely in the right direction. So people said things like um, it's simple, feels less onerous than having to gather all the information from different places yourself. I like the visual aspect. I like the step by step all on one page and you can see what you've done and where you're going to go. Um, and this was a lot quicker than our current system it's smooth presented nicely not clunky and goes in a nice chronological order i like everything being in one place it's simple and clean so i feel like we're definitely going in the right direction with validation as well um last slide please um, and again, so just to reiterate, we'll, we're going through a story mapping workshop later, and so we'll be really like pushing that the purpose of validation is to ensure that everything is present and correct for the officer to assess the application. Coming back to this um, uh, mindset that officers had when we were talking to them about, I want it to give me confidence there aren't any mistakes. So I think things we'll be making sure that we're, we're looking at um, as we move into households is, is keeping everything in one place, checklists. Um, and reducing manual tasks. So those are the sort of like the way that we'll be focusing our thinking as we look at the future iterations um, as we start to move into householder. Um, and that's me, thank you. I think I'm passing over to Ben. Hi there, just finding the mute button there. Um, hi, I'm Ben. I'm uh, um, developer at Unboxed, uh, just been working recently on the updates to constraints based on changing red line boundaries. So um, the mm. previous situation is the, this is the um, notice that would be displayed. Um, basically, if the boundary was changed for whatever reason, we only receive, we only had the constraints that were received from Plan X when the application was created. Um, and so if the boundary of that application was ever changed after that point, we wouldn't have updated um, constraints on it. We'd just display this notice to the officer that they should manually check that, which obviously isn't really ideal. Um, sort of doing the bare minimum, like stop get measure to make sure that we knew something was out of date, but nothing more. Um, next slide, please. Oh, I think I think these are out of order. Uh, I did just update them in the thing, but yeah, could next slide, please. Yeah. So, um, so what what we're doing now is whenever the red line bound is updated um, after creation, we'll refetch a list of the constraints from Plan X. Um, and so as Holly touched upon, this view here is a bit um, in need of work still, but the basic um, data now, we show the cons both the constraints that have been identified by Plan X, but also at the bottom there, the removed constraints, the constraints that were previously um, added to the application but no longer so for example if you change the red line so that it is no longer in a flood zone it'll identify that it used to be marked as in a flood zone and, and isn't anymore just to allow the possibility of correcting that and so on um so yeah there's a lot more um of the data provided by plan x that we can make use of in the future about about the nature of these constraints but this is the sort of starting point for having that actually kept in line with the boundary. Um, so yeah, I'm, that's, I'm done. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we'll move on now to Plan X and Jess, developer Plan X is gonna 
talk to us about service improvements. Good morning. Um, I'm Jess. I'm a developer at Plan X. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> I'm going to share a bit about um, three updates and recent feature developments informed by user research and analytics. This is on behalf of our whole Plan X developer design content team um, with support from a lot of our user research by our partners at Nomensa. <laughs> next slide, please. Um, so the first piece. <laughs> Um, is introducing a dedicated next steps component. Um, this comes from these cards on our high level roadmap, um, which are sort of needs of applicants. Um, so as a homeowner, I wanna know what types of planning consent I need to apply for so that I can apply for the right ones. Um, and as a user of a guidance service, which for example is find out if I need planning permission, I wanna see clear next steps that link me to the next services I need. Um, and so this lets us think of um, how we connect the services that we're providing and make sure applicants always know what to do next and what they need. Uh, next slide, please. So I have a little bit of a delay. Can other folks see the next slide? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes, it's, it's moving. I can. Okay, um, I'll just go from memory then if that's okay. Sorry, this is a funny Teams thing for me. Um, so the way this currently works, uh, there we go. Okay, um, we display this to users at the end of a guidance service um, using sort of the same format and design currently as we ask them normal questions in. Uh, but this has typically led to like a lot of confusion. <laughs> um, because we're sort of uh, making use of this component in a way it's not really meant to be. <laughs> um, and a big one is sort of, why is there still a continue button on this page when I'm actually at the end of the, my service? Why can sort of these options that I have to select from not link me directly to that service, rather they're taking me to like another page within Plan X still. Um, so address this, next slide please. Uh, we have, redesigned um, a new component that editors and content designers can add directly to services. Um, it's designed to better communicate that it is sort of like the terminal page of a service. It hopefully gives you really clear options of what you can do next, no room for misunderstanding, and will always link away directly to services or other resources. Mm -hmm. And next slide, please. Sorry, these still aren't updating for me, so I'm going a little <laughs> uh, by memory. Um, the second feature that we are working from um, is the ability to more flexibly support images and um, GIFs or GIFs, depending on, I'm never quite sure, uh, throughout all types of Planix content. Um, and so we know that this is sort of a um, visuals, especially when it comes to helping explain requirements for architectural drawings, things like location plans are really, really crucial. <laughs> and right now, the way that we support these are quite static ways. <laughs> uh, there's basically options for sort of a single image to be provided in certain places in the platform. Uh, but next slide, please. But going forward, um, we have, um, ah, sorry, um, a key example of where we're hoping that images will replace sort of longer areas of help text is specifically on drop boundary. We know that this help text is still perhaps not always the clearest to users or it's just sort of too much and people are glancing over it and jumping straight to the map still. And one of the most common errors we still see on this page um, is like, for example, as a homeowner building an extension, um, I think I just need to draw around the area that my new extension covers and not actually draw my full site boundary up to the road all the way to like my neighboring borders, et cetera. <laughs> um, even though this is sort of like provided in this gray text at the top, we know it's still sort of getting glanced over. So we're really hopeful that sort of images that show 
examples of good and bad drawings can help sort of steer applicants in the right direction here and lead to better validation results. So next slide, please. <laughs> um, and what this will look like um, for service designers is the ability to add images anywhere that they are writing rich text in the PlanX editor. And then that can result in sort of really pretty flexible pages like this one that's mocked up of being able to really now clearly show do's and don'ts of architectural drawing requirements with example images, as many as you would like to provide as a service designer. <laughs> Rather than before, this was maybe just one or maybe just in sidebars, but now it can be anywhere. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> and the third and final feature update is um, a pretty exciting one. Uh, so if you were watching last month, we introduced a new upload and label component. Um, and this is sort of a new extension of that, which is the ability to list documents for applicants based on rules without requiring that they're actually uploaded yet. Um, and so this relates to sort of some of these things on our high level roadmap, especially around um, so as a user of a guidance service, like find out if I need planning permission, even though that service is not going to require me to upload files or pay for anything, I still want to know how much the future planning applications that I might want to start after using that guidance service are going to cost, or I want to know what files I should expect to need to upload based on my answers in the guidance service. So based on my project type, based on um, other factors, things like the constraints that apply to me, maybe. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, so in order to enable this, we are extending sort of the upload and label component that we just recently introduced um, to have this really nice little toggle option for editors that allow them to um, still define all of these rules-based file requirements. And that means sort of being able to say, if an applicant answers this, then require file that or recommend file that based on that answer. Um, but to sort of have the option to hide all of the validation and the actual sort of interactive upload so that the list is still presented to the applicant, but they can just read it and continue past. Um, all three of these features are sort of in their final stages of implementation and services and testing with PO officers. So please keep an eye out for them, hopefully being introduced in live services in the coming weeks. And that's all for me today. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. We'll move swiftly to communications. Christine and Ray, thank you. Thank you. Morning, um, I'm Christine and I'm the um, Comms lead for open digital planning, and I'm joined by Ray, who um, is from Agile Collective and has been working on the comms for ODP for around a year now. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so we're just going to give you a brief overview of um, the work that we've been doing on comms. So we start with like how the project like kicked off, and Ray will will we'll talk about that. How we've um, been looking at the project, um, refreshing it since um, I started um, in May, and where we are now uh, as well. Next slide, please. And I'll hand over to you, Ray. Hi everyone. So Agile Collective is a web development agency. I'm a user experience designer that works there and we have been on this comms project since August 2022 and we've done a lot with the project since then. And as Christine just stated, we've just started a project refresh. But what we did initially when we started this project was build the identity of open digital planning. So even the slide deck that we're using now, for example, was part of this comms refresh. So um, when the project kicked off, we molded the project identity, we created the visual and verbal brand of the ODP project, and we also de designed and developed the open digital planning website. Uh, we create content, content with the website so that we could drive adoption of the products and services. And we also wanted to demonstrate the benefits of digital transformation. So all of these things have been sort of uh, developed along the way. And then in May, 
uh, of this year, we started a project refresh to revisit everything and see what needed to be updated. Next slide, please. So for the project refresh, we always start off with a theory of change workshop, and this is where we identify the goals. So we have all of the stakeholders in this session and we together we decide on what we want the aim of the project to be. So in this refresh, the goal that we came up with was to review existing communication content and channels and agree benchmarks for each channel and develop a plan with roles and responsibilities for the coming three months and beyond, which is how long this refresh is going to last for. Next slide, please. Christine? Um, so th these are the areas that, that we look after, um, which include the ODP uh, website, um, we've got social media as well, as, uh, so we've got LinkedIn and Twitter accounts, and I hope you're uh, following us on, on at least one of those. Um, and we have put together a communication strategy that kind of like sets out um, like where we are now, where we want to go, how and how we're going to do it. So uh, who we want to, to talk to and engage with um, along the way. And then we've also got our branding and internal comms um um side of things as well so that's everything that you see visually and it's how we engage um as a community next slide please um and so these are some of the deliverables there's two slides of this so that there is quite a lot to um deliver and the green ticks kind of represent um what we've actually began and we're starting and, or have achieved. Uh, I'll just pick out a few of those things. So um, one of the things that we really need are like case studies um, and we have started that process. So I've got a great case study on Plan X um, already and I've got a few others that are in the works. Um, we're in the process of rebuilding the website. Um, so that's moved over to a CMS system that is a lot easier for us to manage. So those um, any changes and updates can be done pretty quickly, uh, which we weren't able to do before. Um, uh, we've also we've got our um, branding set up, which uh, Ray will talk about a bit more later and a lot of assets that that the community can use as well. Uh, next slide, please. Ray. Do you want to go through the, this, some of these points? Yes, so uh, it's also uh, very good to note that all of these deliverables are only part of the project refresh. So we'd already achieved a lot of things before the refresh started, and then we've just been touching upon them now and actually starting new things, uh, which we'll go into more detail about later. So as part of uh, this project, we did some user research. So we sent out a survey uh, via Slack to all internal team members and this really informed a lot of new sort of internal channels that we'll be going into more detail about later. Um, the response was great, we had a really good uh, mixed response from a lot of different council members and we were really grateful for that interaction. We also have been having regular sprint planning and review meetings. This is just the sort of system that we work with. So every week we have a meeting, everybody comes along and we've been moving things along in the project pretty fast and smoothly. Uh, the website has been transferred to CMS, which Christine just touched upon. So now uh, different ODP team members have access to the CMS and can edit it themselves. And Christine oversees this process. And now, because we're in Sprint 6, we're going to be wrapping up. So we'll be doing a final report and recommendations for the future of ODP communications, which we will be happy to share with everyone once it's ready. Next slide, please. OK, so along the way, uh, there's been a few different things that we've done, which uh, we didn't actually anticipate in the beginning, but has been really interesting and fun to sort of um, be part of as well. So we've created a guide to communications for onboarding. So we wanted to make sure that from the get go, uh, new councils that were joining and anyone new who was joining ODP would understand what communications uh, are and how they can get involved in the various channels that they can interact with us. We've adapted to a shifting ODP focus. So in the original communications project uh, back in August, the focus of the audience was all external. So it was for uh, councils who were interested in joining ODP 
But in this project, we found that there's been a shift internally um, and looking at more how we can make ODP uh, more of a community space internally for team members. And we also created custom assets for Medway Wede, which looked really nice. We have a picture coming up later, and um, I think there's more information later in the show and tell from Jonathan on this. Next slide, please. So with the website, the site at the moment is in the process of being updated. The site has always been editable, but formally all changes had to go through Agile Collective. So somebody, a developer on our side would process any change requests and we would update it on our end. But now that the site has been trans transferred to a CMS, we now have created user roles and Christine as comms lead is able to manage that content and update it as and when it's needed. Um, and so far, what we've done is we've moved the site over, we've created a content strategy of how things will be published, we have added users to that, and we are in the process of setting up some KPIs. Um, and we've also done a very in-depth audit, because we know that the site needs to be updated. So in the next few weeks, uh, you'll see that things on, on the site are changing and being updated. Next slide, please. Yeah, you'll also see some new features on the website as well, and we will share that with everybody in the um, uh, ODP community, but we'll also share that externally as well for, for, for those that are interested. Um, so the um, communication strategy, so um, that's one of the first things that I started working on when I, when I joined in May. So we now have a strategy in place. A uh, comm strategy is always something that's quite fluid and flexible and ever changing. But at the moment, our key objectives and, and the top two really are supporting new council partners into the ODP community um, and also increasing um, website traffic. So we, we want people externally to find out more about open digital planning. Um, and have access to, you know, information about the products, the services and our partners and some of the news um, and updates and interesting stuff that are coming out of the project as well. Um, and then uh, and we will be using things like um, social media, um, like our, our Twitter, our LinkedIn. We will eventually introduce um, an external newsletter um, as well. Um, to try and drive that, that traffic to the website. So that's kind of our like major tool. Um, so longer term, we also want to position um, ODP project team. So that's kind of everybody who's working in ODP really as like trusted local authority digital planning experts, um, which you are. Um, and we want to increase the adoption of best practice in um, digital planning amongst local planning authorities. So our key audiences here, and this is very, very top line, are those that are key to the success of ODP. So that's our um, ODP partners at the moment, so our, our, our local planning authorities and also um, future partners as well. Um, and we also, we also, another one is like um, those that are interested in ODP, such as uh, businesses and residents, so people that are going to benefit from it. And then you've got trade press and central government and the, the, those ones there, that, that that audience group is key to like positioning the ODP project team um, as trusted um, experts and also increasing adoption in, in best practice. Um, and so the way in which we're going to implement all of this is uh, through blogs and case studies telling the ODP story, um, th things like this, such as the show and tells, um, videoing them and having like product demos and so forth. Um, and obviously our social media channels and our website, Key Key Channel. We're going to be introducing newsletters as well. So the first will be an internal newsletter for the um, ODP community. Um, we'll be putting together an events calendar for the community as well um, and just making sure that there's regular like community like like updates and that everybody's informed about what, what's going on because um, you know we're working uh, people are working across like multiple like projects and services. Uh, next slide please. Um, so I touched on the newsletter so um, we're going to actually be launching the first e-newsletter which is the internal one um, next Monday the 24th of July 
Um, we've got a really interesting article on Plan X that's going into that newsletter. So um, kind of the format of the, the newsletter will be spotlight on articles, latest news and updates and events. And I imagine that's where we're starting, but that's going to grow as we get more feedback and um, more people wanting to share things um, on that platform. Next slide, please. I'll hand that over to you, Ray. Yes, thank you, Christine. So binding on internal comms has been a huge part of this project as well. Uh, originally, when we started, we created a big sort of library of assets that ODP team members could use. So this is just like promotional material, posters, um, things to share on social media, reusable presentation templates, just a whole bunch of things. So we've been doing a branding refresh and we've also been making sure that things are easy to find. So as part of this project, we have put everything in a place that works for ODP teams. So we have put everything into an ODP Google Drive. We are currently working on how to signpost this in the best way that people know exactly where it is and where to find it. Um, and But we have posted this internally on Slack channels. We've created new branding assets and we've made sure that all of the templates are very simple, easy to use Google templates that can be edited as and when they are needed. And we're also making sure that we present updates on these things, such as in the show and tell, so people are aware of them. Next slide, please. Thank you. So some of the assets that we have available at the moment are different variations of the logo to use. And we also have guides on how this should be used, style guides on verbal sort of communication. We have brand guidelines as well that are accessible to everyone on the team. We have presentation templates, banners, posters, roller banners, stickers, social media templates for LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, YouTube, video intro and outro templates for when any sort of video demos are created. We have really nice uh, intro and outro cards to really push the ODP branding out into the community. We have an ODP image library and we also have gone into animated GIFs which look really nice and will be shared on the social media soon. Next slide, please. And finally, this is an example of some of the new branding being used at the Medway Away Day. So we created this roller banner design and it looked really, really nice. And I believe there were some posters too, but I have this image of ODP branding being put out to use in the community and it looks really nice. Thank you everyone. That was me, mine and Christine's uh, communications update. Thanks so much. Um, we are running a bit behind schedule, but we have um, Katie talking to us a bit about onboarding. Thank you, Katie. And we might have a bit of time for Jonathan at the end, but we'll see how we get on. Yeah. Okay, um, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Katie. I'm one of the council support partners. So I'm particularly looking at um, cohort two, which are the councils who are either adopting Plan X or BOPS. And I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about um, Notion and what we're we doing with it, what it looks like, um, and probably what is also to come. So next slide, please. So Notion, you've probably heard, you know, probably heard it being said, thrown around, you've gotten an email about it at some point, you probably, if you're in my cohort, you've heard me talk about it quite a lot. Um, but Notion is basically the one stop shop um, for all the resources and tools that you'll need for uh, the onboarding and adoption journey for all the new councils and also for councils who currently exist in the program as well. So next slide. So what are some of the things that you'll find in Notion? Um, you'll have, councils will have their onboarding and adoption journey. So all the different phases from um, applying all the way through to launching services. You'll also find guidance on things like resourcing your project with the right people. So everything from setting up your team for ADP, hiring tips, uh, the core functional areas, job descriptions, and how to set up your teams and structure them. You'll also find templates um, that council will need for uh, reporting and measurement, as well as we're working on the directory of people supporting you throughout the program. So the different uh, delivery leads, product leads, user leads, et cetera, et cetera, as well as working groups um, and, uh, and the different uh, communities that are, exist currently across ODP. 
Um, you'll also find guidance on the tool we use on the program. So why do we use Slack? Why do we use Trello? Um, and how to use those as well. Um, as well as that, you'll also find information about the products. So hopefully I can quickly share my screen um, and then just show you what that currently looks like. So just give me two minutes and hopefully technology does what technology needs to do today. OK, hopefully you can see my screen in two minutes. Can you see it? All good? Yeah. OK, so this is currently what Notion looks like. Um, it is a work in progress and we're adding and refining content um, as part of scaling ODP. So we're getting lots of feedback from councils, but also from the delivery teams about what councils will need to be able to enable this to be you know, a fully serviced um, a content board and resource for them in their onboarding and adoption process. So again, you'll have your onboarding and adoption journey, um, phase one all the way to eight. And then we're also working on useful information. So meeting everyone in ODP, the digital, open digital structure and working groups, um, that refreshed uh, meeting schedule and also the different communication tools and templates, as well as getting to know the products. So PlanX and BOPS resources will be linked in there and understanding the different language we use in ODP. So we're speaking the same language um, and we're best able to understand each other. So things like the acronyms that we use, making sure that we break those down to break that um, potential barrier. So for example, if you say, actually, KD, um, I want to get the team set up. I have absolutely no idea where to start. Um, we actually break that down for you, um, what the different stages look like. So say you want to get your team set up um, and think about who needs to be on uh, your project team. Um, we provide in this area the different guidance, so how to set up your team for ODP, some hiring tips that you need to consider, the different functional areas, so your stakeholder manager versus your product owner versus your service owner, versus your delivery manager. What are the different um, functions um, and what are the things that you need to think about as well? Um, and as well as that, we also then give a, an indicative ODP team structure as well as job descriptions. And also, I think one thing that's really good as well um, in, in this is that we're taking a lot of the conversations um, and the learnings that uh, original councils had, so the likes of Medway, Newcastle, et cetera, Camden, that they've learned um, throughout their onboarding process. We're iterating that and, uh, you know, working through that so that we can kind of improve that as we go along. Um, so one of the things that I'm also working on on this, and hopefully you can still see my screen, and I think this is probably probably going to be the really exciting bit because you everybody wants to know who's who who's on the program, who they can contact. Um, so I'm currently working on the meeting the program team, so understanding who's within the software planning, software operations team, who do, who do you go to for certain things, so like comms, you know, performance and metrics, technicals, commercials, um, Christine for communications and the different council support partner, as well as the wider team. So who do you speak to at uh, Plan X for certain things? What are the different delivery teams and what are the terms of references for those? And now I'm working on the Plan X services and who will be involved in that. And that will be that will then evolve into uh, as well uh, the working groups. So the terms of references for the working groups and how councils can get involved in the different working groups. So that's a bit of a whistle stop tour because I'm very, very conscious of time. Um, but in it. In conclusion, there's a lot that's happening across Notion. There's also a lot um, that's coming as well. And if you have suggestions, find me on Slack, drop them to me, um, and we can get that uh, in the uh, in the planning board for uh, content. And that's it. And I will pass. Thanks, to you. Thanks so yeah, much, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jonathan, if you want to jump in for a quick update on Medway. Yeah, that's our problem. Together. Thank you. Um, if we can just go to the, yep, so that's it. So uh, back in uh, two weeks ago today, in fact, on the 5th of July, we had the uh, Medway to, uh, Medway Together Day. And if you want to go to the next slide, you just there's a couple of photos um, uh, where you can sort of see, of, obviously, here's, here's us in on the day. Uh, we were at the Corn Exchange in the middle of historic Rochester. Um, and we had, yeah, it was a really good day 
got together, had some really good discussions. You know, team teams meetings are wonderful and all, but nothing nothing beats a face to face. Um, and having all of these all of these great people in one room together, you really got to flesh out flesh out some really good ideas from you know people that have been here since day one to those that joined us three months ago. So it's it's a really big difference. And then you don't and then everyone has their viewpoints. And then because everyone's got their own their viewpoints, you be at, you can see the whole picture of where we are, where we're going. Um, that's basically in a nutshell what happened. Um, I don't know if Lisa's on the call if she wants to add anything, but uh, if not, then um that that's all from me i am thank you jonathan and thank you so much for everyone that uh, attended as well um i'm just waiting for the photos to come back from our comms team and once they're back i'll be sharing them with uh christine ray and i'll be putting them on slack as well so a big thank you to everyone and looking forward to the next event thanks nora thank you very much it's been a really wonderful day at medway and yes definitely we're looking forward to the next one so thank you very much everyone for attending today and for your questions if you have any more questions please send them to us directly um here are some uh contacts um you can contact odp um the main channel or any of the partner councils um and the next show and tell is on 16 of august um and thank you again and have a great rest of your day Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.